Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm David here with Zion's Gate Ranch. I can't wait to show you what we got in store for you today. We are going to make rabbit soup. One of my favorite things to have in the winter time. It is delicious, so come along and let's do it. So welcome to my kitchen. We're back in the kitchen again. We're always seeming like we're in the kitchen, but that's what we love to do. We love to cook. We love to cook good food. So welcome to my kitchen, everyone. <laughs> so welcome, welcome to my kitchen. Now that I've invited you in, we became friends. <laughs> so hit the subscribe, hit the like, now that we're good friends. <laughs> All right, now what we are going to do tonight, everyone, is we're going to take this rabbit that we raise right here on our farm here at Zion's Gate Ranch. This is a Japanese Harlequin rabbit. They're a kind of a heritage breed, they're a rare breed, and I do highly recommend these on your farm. They're so easy to raise, so easy to keep. You can feed them from your garden scraps grass clipping grass clippings in the summertime it's so easy to feed these rabbits on minimal feed especially when your garden is in full bloom and you can you can we use a scythe here on our homestead scything with a, a scythe there will be a future video on that but scything is an awesome thing that you can feed your animals for free gardening feed them for free this is a beautiful you know, nice rabbit that will make delicious soup. Now that the cold weather is kicked in, you guys, there is nothing like rabbit soup with some egg noodles. It's gonna be dynamite. So let's get started and let's get right into it. He's already been cleaned. We're just gonna give him another cleaning because you always wanna clean your meat. Even, especially if you buy it from someone. I did this one and I still wash it, so. If you get it from someone, I still recommend wash it. Okay, so get your rabbit on the cutting board. And this baby is just a beautiful rabbit. You ought to see the hides. The hides turned out fantastic. They're actually still on the porch. We're going to make a blanket someday out of all the hides if we keep them rabbits. They're just going to be so soft. It's going to be amazing. What that's, our, that's my goal with all my rabbits. I'm going to have a big, huge quilt made out of it. Let's get started in our soup. This is an Instapot Dutch oven. I normally just use a cast iron in the oven, but when you're doing some meals, I actually like this thing because you can set the temperature on this, 250, 350, 375, and it's cast iron. It has a cast iron lid, and I'm telling you what, it actually works very well. I'm gonna leave a link in the description so that you guys can check this out. I highly recommend getting one of these. They just hold heat better, they cook better, and you can adjust the temperature. A crock pot, you can't really do that kind of thing. This you can. Now, let's talk about seasonings. What are we gonna season this rabbit with? First and foremost, we use real salt on almost about everything. We buy it in bulk, like big bags, tubs. It has a lot of minerals in it. As you can see, there's just a lot of minerals in this kind of salt. So good for you and your family. Number one ingredient we have right here, garlic powder. This is homemade from our own garden. Very strong stuff. We already talked about salt. We're gonna use wood-fired garlic kinders. We'll leave a link in the description so you can buy these on Amazon. Same with this. this is, we're gonna use cracked pepper and lemon this time. Don't forget the Tajin. You gotta add lime. Lime is very important, and this stuff is great. We got this, Orrington Farms Broth Base. This is probably one of the best broth bases I've ever had. Let me open it up so you can see it. It's, you know, it's like powder. I'll even put this Roman noodles when I'm in a hurry and just makes it so much more better. 
And we're gonna add liquid chicken broth. This is just some cheap chicken broth from our store. I mean, I'm, obviously there's better chicken broth than this. We live in a country town, so they don't sell like organic stuff there. I do recommend getting less sodium if you use chicken broth on anything because if you're adding all these seasonings, it just don't work well. Let's get right to the good stuff. Use whatever seasonings you do have. And I forgot to mention, we have home-raised parsley from our garden. I'm gonna be using that too. Now, I do use a binder or some kind of oil, mustard, oil, something that would help the seasoning just kind of stick to it just like your barbecuing or whatever. I usually use organic olive oil. I am out at this moment. So we're, I have an extra bottle of canola oil, which is better than some oils. We're gonna use that just a tiny bit. So let's start with the canola oil or olive oil, which I recommend. Take it on your rabbit and drizzle it on your wrap. Rub it in. Let's do one more cap on the bottom side. Rabbits are so easy to raise, guys, it's for sure. Let's rub this in. We're gonna start with salt. Don't go crazy because you gotta remember the broth has salt in it. The broth base has salt in it. And a lot of these other seasonings have salt in it. So I'm just gonna tinkle, tinkle, tinkle over the whole bottom side with real salt. We're gonna add real garlic powder. You don't want a lot. I mean, this stuff is potent all you want wood fire garlic and just lightly cover it now we're gonna go on to the lemon because lemon tastes very well with chicken white meat rabbit even pork chopped lemon can taste good but a white meat it tastes very well just tinkle 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 Tajin. lime actually tenderizes your meat if you all didn't know Lime, citric, acid, it is a it's a natural tenderizer. One more thing I forgot about in my lineup was black pepper. Just enough to season your rabbit. Use your hands, pat, pat, pat. Flip it over, same thing. Parsley. So tasty looking. I mean, there's just something about meat that just looks amazing when it's got herbs, seasonings. We're gonna put this in our Dutch oven, crock pot, insta pot. So now the next step is grab your broth. Just dump it in until it gets about half an inch to an inch in there. So I'm gonna go to manual mode, hit it again. We're gonna go to temperature and we're gonna take it down to 212. Most crock pots heat to 212. Start, that'll be three hours. All right, so after about three hours, the rabbit is definitely starting to fall apart on the temperature that we've been cooking it on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the rabbit out, pull the meat off, and we're gonna put it in a separate pan. That's what you need to do at this point. Wow. Steaming, y'all. All right, so get you some tongs. Every kitchen's gotta have tongs. Don't that look beautiful? Now, isn't that something? Smells like delicacies. Smells like uh, smells like roasted rabbit. <laughs> it smells so delicious. If you had smell o vision, you would be able to smell this, but you don't. Pretend you do. So what you want to do now is take the meat off the bones. Fall apart tender, down to the bones. Now don't they look good? 
take the hind quarters, get all the meat off, take all the extra meat, put it in a separate pan. Oh, sorry. It's supposed to go in a separate pan. <laughs> Now the whole point behind this is, is you want to get the bones out of the rabbit, number one. Number two is you don't want to just cook the rabbit down so much in that slow cooker where it, the meat just becomes shredded. It doesn't palate well. It's just real stringy meat. You don't really get to taste the rabbit as much. Now if you take this off, it looks like chunks of chicken. Chunks, it's actually chunks of rabbit, but it, tastes, it, has, it actually has texture. And that's what you want. What do you do with the bones? You save them. It's called broth slash stock. You know, it has bones and meat in it. So you can call it broth. Now it's time to boil some noodles. Because if you have soup, you got to have noodles. All right, that should be enough water. There probably is a rule of thumb. But around here, I just kind of tinkle, pinkle, eye it. Dabble, dabble, dibble, dabble, scrabble, guess what we do around here. Okay. <laughs> you guess. Okay. <laughs> a little, you know, how people cook. They just do a little, how much was that? I don't know. So what we're doing, <laughs> egg noodles. We're using egg noodles. Put your pot of water on here. We're going to turn this baby on high. Get this to a boil. You do not want to get these noodles real done. You want them semi done because we're going to put them back with the broth. We're going to put this rabbit back with the broth and we're going to simmer it with the broth. So you kind of, we're going to do a little more cooking at the end. So we're going to get this to a boil. That's the next step. Now that we're at a full boil, we're going to take our egg noodles, dump them in. Give it a stir. All right, so these are already done. Doesn't take long at all. I mean, you gotta really watch them because they can get done real quick. So let's go ahead and dump these in here. All right, Chef RD is back at it here in the kitchen. <laughs> all right, we have chicken broth that was left over in this thing. Just dump it in there slowly. This thing's kind of hot, so you don't want to dump cold chicken broth in there so you don't want nothing to crack or anything so just kind of be you don't want to do a little at a time it's kind of cold in the refrigerator so i don't want to crack anything take your orrington farms base this stuff is amazing i mean i can't say enough good things about it it makes everything taste good just take a teaspoon of this a heaping teaspoon of this stuff and we're just gonna dump it in there we're gonna grab our rabbit meat that we set to the side earlier that we took apart let's dump that in there I'm gonna add another teaspoon of this because I think we're gonna add a little more water and you need to judge it by how much broth you have now well, let's do two more all right we're gonna heat this back up because this thing's been off Now that this is running and it's back on, let this get back up to temperature completely where it's really hot, steaming. Then we're gonna add our noodles. All right, this is definitely heated up now that we have the rabbit in the soup and I can't wait to get these noodles in here. The next step is the noodles mixing in with the broth. Dump your noodles in there. We're gonna stir this in with the broth with your noodles now you can see we're kind of short on liquid that's okay if you have liquid broth add it we use our last can that's why i use the base or you could use cubes if you have those but i like this a whole lot better we're going to add water now You want it to be a soup. I'm going to add a little more base, or you, you could say another cube. Whatever you got. What, two of them? To your liking. 
You always want to try it, see where you're at. You try things, and you get you gain weight by trying things. <laughs> you gain weight by cooking good food and trying things. <laughs> Definitely want to just keep adding to your liking. Shut the front door. That's there. You don't have to add these, but we are going to because it does add a lot of flavor. These are ringless honey mushrooms that we harvested right here in the Ozarks on the trails in the Mark Twain National Forest. Walking around, you know. Is that legal? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Good question. We dehydrated them. And we're going to crush some of these up and put them in here. So they add a lot of flavor. You can add regular mushrooms. You could add carrots to this. I mean, look at these things. See how nice they are? Just put a little mushroom flavor in there. Now, if you decide that you want it a little thicker and not too soupy, you can add flour to it and thicken it up. And it'll make it more like a gravy con texture. Or if you have xanthan gum, which I definitely think is a great thing to have on your homestead for roast, for making hot sauce, for thicking agent. It, it works great. It's a Red Mill brand. I love it. And I use it a lot of different things. And I might just add a little bit in here so it's not too soupy. It just adds a little thickness. Not You don't need much with this stuff. It goes a long way. I'm talking a quarter of a teaspoon probably all I'm going to add. Just... I'm just going to add a little bit. Now, there's only one thing left to do, and that is eat it. Look at that rabbit. Soup. Beautiful. So now it's time to find out how good this recipe is. And I can already tell you it's going to be good just by looking at the color of that broth. And see, this is why you didn't want to overcook the rabbit. See, they're in chunks. If you overcooked it, I mean, it would have just been strings everywhere. You really wouldn't know what you're eating if you overcooked the rabbit. So, here we go. Let's, let's eat these noodles and some rabbit right now. This... So good. I mean, especially in the winter time, I could eat that whole pot. I mean, it's so rich. And the rabbit flavor is just there. Mmm. This thing needs one thing that I like. Habanero hot peppers. I love hot spice. That'll really keep you warm in the winter time. Guys, this is such a delicious meal. It's a great way to use your rabbits. Try it, give it a whirl, raise rabbits. They're very easy to raise. You will not regret raising them. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe these videos. Hit the bell icon so that you can be notified from our videos and we will see you guys on the next one we love you guys peace